This is the 350QX3 BNF or bind and fly version. Uh, I wanted to go over some differences between the bind and fly version and the uh, aerial photography version or the AP version of the 350QX3 that I think everyone should be aware of before buying one of these. The first uh, big thing I want to bring up is uh, something about the flight controller. The flight controller of the 350QX3 BNF uh, is not the same because of one small but big difference depending on your view is the addition of this black capacitor. If you open your 350QX3 BNF you will not find that you will most likely not find this um, but if you check a 350QX3 AP version you will see it there and I'll get to the reason why uh, I and others think that this difference uh, is present back in the end of 2014, this is who runs usstrongrepair.com. Um, in the 350QX2, the flight controller uh, was changed. They had less capacitors, which is what that is on it, and in an effort to cut corners, supposedly. Uh, that ended up putting a lot of strain on the 54328 MOSFET or the power chip, power regulator. Um, so that was causing or allegedly causing some units to fall from the sky because what would happen is the chip would overheat and down it would come. You were, you were more at risk if you had a camera or gimbal on the unit because obviously you've got a heavier payload, more power draw, more to, uh, more to deal with. I had my QX2 AP set up for about two or three weeks before I experienced a drop from the sky myself. Um, and then I went online and I tried to figure out why did that happened because after I turned it on, there was nothing wrong with it. It flew, um, there was nothing, nothing going on. And that's when I found the post by, uh, Burl Bar, who has done testing on this and noted that he's seen a lot of QX3s, or a lot of QX2s drop from the sky with, because they don't have this. So he actually sent a message to Horizon suggesting to add this supposedly and that's where this post comes out that I guess Horizon Hobbies eventually does listen. Um, with that being said, you might buy this thinking that you'll add a camera or gimbal later on which is great but it doesn't come with this. So by not flying with this, are you now at greater risk of falling out of the sky? Because if the MOSFET gets overloaded, then you're just gonna get reset and drop. I can't say for sure. Um, I had a fall from the sky with the gimbal on it and camera again. I can't prove what the reason was, but that's why on this one, I just haven't didn't want to take the chance. I will be carrying some other stuff, not a Seago 2 or uh, other things like that. But um, that's why on mine, just to be safe, I've gone ahead and taken his suggestion and added a 300 and added a 100 UF um, 35 volt capacitor. This is a Cheng. Yeah, here you go, so you can see it. This is a Chang uh, 100 UF 35 volt capacitor. And all you have to do to get this done is just trim it down and solder it right onto there like that. 
this is the negative side. This is the negative side. This is the positive side. And that's also indicated by two things on the capacitor here, the capacitors. The uh, short end, the short wire is the negative and the long wire is the positive. And even after you cut it, it's usually always labeled. On these, it's labeled like this. You can see the two uh, minuses on the side there. So once you do that, you've basically done exact, more or less what Horizon has done. Um, again, do that at your own risk. I can't guarantee that that will help you. And do note that if you do end up doing that and they find out about it, you've just voided your warranty. It is how it is. But anyway, so that's the capacitor mod. That's the importance of it. And again, if you get a QX3 BNF, chances are you're not going to have that. If you're not planning on adding anything to the unit, maybe that's not such a problem. I have, I have to admit that I have at, at least 100 flights on my QX2 ever since I uh, fell from the sky. It, it survived, and that doesn't have the capacitor on it, and I haven't had the issue since, and I've gone full throttle, and uh, still don't have the problem, but again, I'm not carrying anything on that unit. I'm not adding any extra weight to it where, you know, maybe that issue would be triggered. Um, with that being said, there's the other, there's another little annoying problem with this, and that's regarding the gimbal cable. Oh, wait, wait, one other thing. When you're, when you're, uh, before you install capacitors like this, you should probably just check them with a multimeter just to make sure that they're, uh, just to make sure that they at least have continuity or are working correctly, because you wouldn't want to install a capacitor just for it to not work. So just give it a test with a multimeter before you uh, do your work. Again, this is a mod that this is a modification that won't what really won't hurt it um, or shouldn't hurt it. It can probably only help if you get uh, stuck in a situation like that. So anyway, cheap, three dollars. You can buy them off of eBay. Chang 100 UF, uh, 35 volt capacitors. Link will be in the description below. I believe Horizon is fitting a uh, 10 volt 100 UF. So this is actually this is actually better than what they've included on the AP versions. So. Anyway, back to the gimbal cable. This is just something that really annoys me is the fact that um, the gimbal wire or the wire that they come because, you know, they expect you to maybe add a camera to this later on. Yeah, kind of shady to not have that there with that intention. But anyway, uh, so this little, this connector is kind of just dangling out of the side of the skid. Mine is cut, I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, this is the connector that goes to the servo, which just goes down to the leg, and then here's this wire that's soldered directly onto the board. Again, all of that just goes right into this. Now here's the problem with this. As you can see, this thing is too, too big. You can't get it up through here, you can't get it through there. So, if you're going to do work on the body or you're trying to replace things, it's a pain. You either have to splice, you either have to splice wires, or you have to just crack up the body. And even after you're done cracking up the body, you have to uh, find a way to either. Well, you can't get it back down through there. I don't think. Maybe you can push this up through here. I haven't really. Uh, it's it's difficult because again, you're dealing with this. So. You can't get it down through, you can't get it up through. You got this big piece. And then this is, with this being directly on the board, that creates a whole other problem. Um, my suggestion would maybe be to uh, drill a hole here so that way you can, and, and crack the body, so that way you don't have to do any cutting. And then you should be able to just fish this down 
actually, you know, somewhere there. Although I know the gimbal goes on somewhere there as well, so you kind of have to be careful as to what, what you're doing. Yeah, again, it's kind of dis kind of disappointing. They don't. This is really sh uh, sloppy, uh, sloppy work in my opinion, because everything else on this can be replaced without having to deal with that issue, but not the gimbal cable. Uh, just a quick tip: if you do end up needing to splice it or you decide to splice things together, these are really great. They require no soldering knowledge, soldering knowledge. They're just uh, Telco jelly clamps. They they provide a really nice hold. All you do is uh, just put the two wires together and then create create the junction, and that'll that should work just fine for uh, patching this back up if you need to. So yes, that's the 350QX3 uh, by Nifly. Um, I'm really glad that the U.S. drone repair guy has really done the homework and the research on this to uh, let the community know about this problem so uh, people like me can uh, apply the fix. Uh, again, so that's the two points is that if you get a QX3 BNF, you probably will not have the capacitor, which may or may not help you fall from the, help prevent you from falling from the sky when you have more, you know, payload or power running through the unit. And then B is that the gimbal cable is uh, put together kind of shoddy. Other than that, this is fine. There's nothing else that's really a problem. Some people have complained about the glue on it at, well, I say that glue doesn't exist there. It, the, to me, that doesn't really matter. If anything, it just holds this stuff in a little bit better than it did before. Um, the final thought is that the, uh, like the body of the QX3 bottom, again, is on the BNF, it pretty much mimics the QX2 because on the AP version, there's actually some sort of little hole for the camera and gimbal cables. That's just something to consider. Um, yeah. there. This is why there are some people that feel like this is just an upgraded QX2. I'm not going to make that claim because I don't know that for sure. But that's the information. The facts are the capacitor usually exists in the AP version. Usually doesn't exist in the uh, bind and fly version. You can make up your own mind about why the capacitor was added. Uh, I don't think they just added it for fun. So <laughs> consider that. And then lastly, the gimbal cable. Uh, that is what it is. You just have to deal with it. If you have any questions, let me know, um, and that's it. Thanks.